everybody got really excited the last time we made burgers. So today I'm gonna make burgers, but I'm gonna make them a little bit different. I'm gonna make burgers with a twist. I guess I'm actually combining two different foods in this video. Obviously we're gonna make everything homemade and some of the stuff I'm not gonna take you through the process of because I already got those pickles marinating in my fridge and I've had them for a while, but they're still homemade. But one of the more fun things to make homemade when you make burgers, in my opinion, is the buns. But instead of regular buns, can you guess what we're gonna make? Pretzel buns. They definitely have a really cool look to them if you execute them properly. And I just don't see how you can possibly not love a bunch of Wagyu beef sandwiched between two pretzel buns. Seriously, I mean, how can you get better than that? On top of that, we're gonna make some really delicious special sauce, my favorite recipe. A recipe that I've actually been honing for quite a while. And then we'll put a bunch of really good toppings on there. How can you beat that? Now for this, we're gonna be doing a blend of two things. What you're looking at right here is Japanese Wagyu, more specifically an A5 Takamori strip loin. This bad boy right here is the best of the best. Just look at that marbling. For me, this just never gets old. It actually reminds me of a snowflake. Every single single one has that slightly different pattern, but all of them are so incredibly beautiful. And it's fun to look at the differences between them. As you can see here, we have that fat cap across the top. And then under that, it's just all amazing, perfect marbling. Now, we can't simply just grind this up and make a patty with it because it's not gonna hold together super well because of how much fat there is. So we get another piece of Wagyu. This may not look quite as pretty, but this is an American Wagyu strip loin. So same kind of meat, but just from a different place. As you can see, this is a little bit less fatty. So when we grind this up, it's gonna do a really good job at helping us hold together that patty really nicely. But it should come as no surprise that this is the slightly prettier one. And this is the more prized possession that we're putting in this burger. The other thing I'll say is that these are from the Wagyu shop. And I say that in every video when I use this Wagyu, but this is just where I get it from and I get enough questions about how I get this beef that I'm telling you and has never been an ad but I'm literally just telling you that this is my go-to spot for Wagyu. We'll start here with number one and number no he's too precious I can't I can't throw him. Number two. <laughs> I did it anyway. Once that's all set up, let's do some hand grinding today. I just wanna get in there. Just chop that up real nice and fine. We're basically trying to mince these really well together with our knife. So I'll start by just chopping them into strips. And then once I get there, it's just a free for all. Just go for it. If you're doing this by hand, it'll definitely take you a little while, but it's actually pretty satisfying to see that meat go from those two big steaks into a nicer ground beef, just like this. And the more amazing thing for me is to look at that fat content and that marbling that you've created. Just think about it. Wouldn't this make the best burger you've ever had? Once you've Round up all our burger meat, scrape it off your board with a bench scraper, and then toss it in a bowl. This can sit in the fridge for a little while while we finish making everything else. You don't have to use Wagyu to do this. I'm telling you right now that if you pretty much use any decent steak that you pick up at the market, grind it up yourself, and then make it into a burger, they'll be the best burger patties you've ever experienced. I've done this a lot of times, and this just happens to be probably the best burger meat I've ever made. We'll have to cook it first to see if I'm right. While our meat is resting in the fridge, let's make those pretzel buns. To start, we'll add two cups of warm milk, one and a half cups of warm water, Water. And when I say warm, I mean about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Two tablespoons of vegetable oil, and while whisking, one tablespoon of active dry yeast. I find that if you're not whisking when pouring in yeast, it all clumps together and it can be a real pain in the butt. Now, we'll let this stand for about 10 minutes to wake up a little bit. I'm also gonna add just a sprinkle of sugar, which is technically optional, but I really think helps to wake things up a little bit more. Tilt down your mixer, and while slowly whisking, we're gonna add in seven cups of all-purpose flour. You can definitely do this by hand if you want as well, but I've definitely found over time that letting your stand mixer do the kneading for you instead can save a lot of time and pain in your wrist. So I'm gonna be a little bit lazy today. If any of your edges are sticking at all, you can add a little bit more flour in there. Depending on all sorts of factors, you may even have to use a full cup more of flour than I do in here. But just keep an eye on it. And once it fully pulls together, you'll know when it's done. After that, just let it knead a little while to make sure that it's really soft and smooth all in one big ball together. In the end, if you pull it out and it's still too sticky, close it back down and add a little bit more flour. Once that dough is soft and smooth, scoop it out of your bowl and really try to get every last bit together. Trust me, once you taste one of these pretzel buns, you're gonna wanna eat every last bit. Now, once you've sort of shaped together that big, beautiful piece of dough, you're gonna lift it up, you're gonna plop it right into a nice greased bowl. Make sure that thing has ample space to grow because this is gonna get a heck of a lot bigger. Now, we'll cover this bowl up with a damp kitchen towel and let this rest for about an hour or an hour and a half in a warm place. Now that our pretzel bun dough is rested and doubled in size, we'll take off the towels. It's crazy crazy how much this puffs up, right? That was exactly one hour that I waited. And look how much dough there is right here. To start, I'm gonna give this a gentle little slap to get out some of that air. It's pretty cool how quickly that sinks down, but don't push out too much of the air. I'm gonna put a little flour on my cutting board and then dump out all that dough. The fact that it's really fluffy around the edges here is a sign that this is some fantastic dough that we've made. 
Just look at all that fluffiness right there. It's almost like a perfectly marbled steak with that even spread of air bubbles and dough. And it smells so fermented too. I'm now gonna shape this into a nice log so that I can easily divide it into about 12 even pieces. I'm gonna be making some pretty thick buns here. I'll use my bench scraper to give myself a general little line through the middle. And then I'll try to get some approximately similar sized balls. And then I'll cut them the other way to get these big, nice squares. To shape these squares into buns, I'll clean off my cutting board because I don't want any flour for this part. I'll flip them upside down, then begin Begin pinching in from the outside. I'll go all the way around the bun until I have a little sticky portion right on the bottom. Then, almost like a dumpling, I'll flip it over, and while that sticky part sticks to the bottom of the board, I'll move my hand clockwise until this is the perfect bun shape. This takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it down, it's not a problem at all. As you can see, we've nailed the cute little bun. Add a little bit of flour to the bottom and set this aside. Repeat this exact process with the rest of your buns. The more you've practiced, the quicker you can be at this. Lay your dough balls down on a baking sheet, line with either parchment paper or something similar to this. Be really gentle with them because we want them to stay in this perfect shape. Now again, just for about 15 or 20 minutes since we were handling them so much, we'll lay this towel over and let them rest a little bit. This will let them come back up to that beautiful bulbous shape. So to make our little bath here, we're gonna put about a quarter cup of baking soda, making sure that that doesn't bubble over the edge, and a nice handful of salt. Now, taking these soft beauties a couple buns at a time and placing them into the bath, let them go for about 30 seconds on each side. I'll do these in groups of three. An important thing to note is that the longer I leave them in here, the chewier they'll be after we cook them in the end. They might get a little shriveled and deflated looking right now, but they'll fix themselves when they go back in the oven. Move these around for just a minute and make sure you have something slotted that you can pick them up with. Once these have been in for long enough, shake off that excess water and place them back on your baking sheet. Again, you can experiment a little bit. If you want a really chewy pretzel bun, go for it and just leave them in for like two or three minutes. Now we'll just do the same exact thing with the second half of our batch. Once they're done in the boiling water and they're sitting back on the sheet, we'll take a really sharp knife and make a few indents through the buns. I find that it helps to dip your knife back in that boiling water between each cut so that it's better lubricated to slide right through the bun. This is gonna give us really nice patterns when they eventually expand in the oven. So feel free to play around a little bit with those designs that you're doing. For this one, I'm gonna do an N for Nick. And for this other one, I'm gonna do a P for my hamster pesto. Now we'll place these in the oven at 425 Fahrenheit for about 20 to 22 minutes until they're deep golden brown. We want that golden brown pretzel color. Now for my secret sauce. I'm gonna start with a bunch of mayonnaise. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, I really like to start with just a nice heavy base of mayonnaise. This, you know, is Japanese mayonnaise. And I know I've mentioned that I go through at least one or two bottles a week. I'm pretty sure it has MSG in it, but it's really dang good. And I also don't really care that much about eating MSG. Then I'm gonna go in with some diced homemade pickles. Again, you know I sometimes like to cook, especially with this sort of thing without exact measurements, but I will put a recipe for you in the description below. Next, about the same amount of diced onions. I'll follow that with just a little bit of garlic powder, then out of that same pickle jar, about a tablespoon or so of that juice. A lot a lot of people will put white vinegar in special sauce, but why not use that pickle juice? It's more flavor. To finish out that sauce, I'll add a little bit of hot sauce and some nice salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Let's not forget, just a nice little squirt of ketchup. Now mix that up for the best tasting special sauce you've ever experienced. It seriously is one of the most amazing things out there. And if you make a lot of it, you can set it aside and use it next week for literally anything. Dip fries in it, maybe some chicken nuggets, use it for your sandwiches, it is the best. For our patties, we'll start by cranking up the heat to pretty high. Now because this meat is so so fatty, we really don't need to put down any oil or anything. I'll take out a nice ball and work this into a good shape in my hands. Then I'll press this right down and using my spatula, press it down again. Cause you already know we're making smash patties. Then once it's nice and smashed, leave it and let it cook. When that first side has a nice crust on it, flip it over. Notice that we got a crust and a sear similar to what we would try to get on a steak. That is exactly what we're going for here. Now we'll take a piece of our cheese and lay it over the top, sprinkle just a little bit of water in there and add our lid. That's going to steam in there and immediately melt the cheese. Now, because we have and season this beef yet. And granted, it's Wagyu, so it has a lot of its own flavor in there. Keep your salt and pepper handy to give it a quick hit of each after it finishes. Remove that lid and admire the delicious meltiness that you've got going on. Then hit it with a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. That right there is ready to go on a burger and it's gonna blow your mind. Do the same thing with the remainder of your patties. A nice little ball, place down on the pan, and then a quick little smash. There's something really great about smash patties. They get such a nice crust and they're so easy to cook. For our last few patties here, I'll flip these beauties over and continue admiring those crusts that we're getting on there. Then I'll add on a few different colors of cheese here just to mix things up a little bit. And again, toss on that lid to get them nice and smoky. That's gonna easily melt down that cheese. Same way you would do it with a quesadilla. Now look at that melty goodness. 
These are ready to put on a bun, I think. Into this bowl, I'm gonna pour in my Wagyu fat. Then I'll clean off this crust on my pan so we can toast those buns, and then we're ready to put it together. And once our pan's clean, we'll pour in that fat, and here's the bun I'm gonna be using. We're picking the Nick bun, because this is the Nick burger. Place those cut side down, move them around just a little bit to get the fat all over there, and then press down if you can, just to let them toast evenly. When those buns are golden brown and toasty, put them aside. We're ready to make that burger. To put our burger together, I'll start with a little bed of lettuce so things don't get soggy in the bottom. I know it's not supposed to be healthy, but hey, this helps, right? Next, I'm gonna place down our first patty. That looks so crazy good. After this, I'm gonna add a nice hunk of tomato with a little bit of black flaky salt. You can never forget to salt your tomatoes. Now, instead of caramelized onions, I'm stepping it up a little bit. These are crispy fried onions that I made in my deep fryer. Then I'm gonna put my first round of special sauce and hopefully that'll get slightly soaked up by the onion so that it doesn't bleed all over my entire burger yet. That'll happen, we just wanna wait a minute. Then our second patty, cause what's a burger without a couple patties? Finally, a couple homemade pickles and then a little more special sauce right onto the underside of our bun. On goes our end bun and now I ask you, is that not the craziest burger you've ever seen? Now first, I wanna proudly state that this is the sexiest burger I've made to date. Just look at how crazy that thing is. There's something about all that sauce dripping now. That N on the bun. Oh, we lost a pickle. Oh, we lost another pickle. Every time I make a burger, I feel like I've taught myself. This one's simply unbeatable. Now I hope that's not true because I hope to make many more burgers in my lifetime and I hope that I can beat this. But what I will say is that I'm glad that I'm learning. This is crazy. Just look at how tall it is. Look at how beautiful it is. And wait to see how juicy it is. I don't even know how many layers there were on this thing, but I could sit here for an entire day and just look at this thing. I mean, eventually I'd probably want to eat it, but I'm blown away by its beauty. And the pretzel bun is such a unique twist. I left it in for about 45 seconds on each side and I'm hoping that it'll be a little bit chewy because I think that's an added dimension in a burger that I've really never experienced. I think the best way to dive into this is gonna be to try to cut it in half to really see all that juice come out and try to show you what it looks like in the inside. Show you the skeleton of the burger. After that, of course, I'll try to guide you through what it tastes like. Let's sandwich it down a little bit and then try to cut our knife straight through here. Here I go. I have to say, that was actually a cleaner cut than I thought I was gonna get. And opening it up, that's pure perfection. Now, before I dive in and absolutely destroy this burger, just look at that. I like that it's squeezable down to a biteable size. Is biteable even a word? Those crispy onions are lining the front of this right now, which will give an added crunch that we haven't seen before. That bun looks so incredibly fluffy. The whole thing just screams, eat me. So let's do it. Now, here we go. Wow, that's crazy. It's stripped all the way down my arm, but I don't even care. There are so many things going through my head right now. They say to make great food, you have to focus on so many things, namely salt, fat, acid, heat, those kind of things. But when you think past that, you have to think of even more. Yet with this burger, I feel like it pushes the boundaries of having too much. Enough different textures and flavors and different intensities of cold and hot that it throws your mind for a loop. That you don't even know what to focus on when you're eating it. We have those crispy onions. We have that salted tomato that's so juicy. We have those pickles that give a zing. We have that special sauce that's so complex by itself. Then we have that, wow, which, oh my gosh. And then that pretzel bun, which is chewy and crunchy on the edge. The lettuce doesn't really do anything. Get out of here, lettuce. But seriously, this is a knockout crazy burger. You don't get this every day. I will say, if you're making everything homemade, this is gonna take you a little while. I'm not gonna lie. I just wanna be honest about that part. But every little ounce of flavor here is worth it. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, maybe join that notifications gang, because we're having a lot of fun in the notifications gang. I don't think I can join it because it's my own notifications gang, but if I could, I would already be joined. Also, make sure you toss a comment on the video. Tell me what you want to do next. Tell me what you thought about the burger. It was a crazy burger. I'll tell you that much, but I really would love to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, I'm going to clean my hands and I'll see you next time.